Hi, I'm Alnaz. I'm here with Emily, Brandon, and Brian. We want to tell you about collagen, the main protein in skin and connective tissue, as well as its application for treating non-healing wounds. Whenever someone has a scrape, burn, or cut, the human body heals these injuries. All normal wounds heal in a series of stages, during which the blood clots in the scab forms to protect the fragile skin underneath. White blood cells heal the wound and fight infections, while red blood cells create collagen as the foundation for new tissue. The wound fills with tissue where new skin grows below. However, chronic wounds do not heal normally. Approximately 6.5 million people suffer from chronic or non-healing wounds in the U.S. Chronic wounds heal very slowly, taking more than three months to heal. Non-healing wounds do not follow the natural healing process of normal wounds. Chronic wounds have excess matrix metalloproteinases MMPs, which degrade both viable and non-viable collagen which are used in the wound healing process. They often stay in an inflammatory stage which prevents the transition to the proliferation stage where new, new blood vessels and tissue form. Common features of chronic wounds include excessive levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, proteases, and ROS, as well as the existence of persistent infection and a deficiency of stem cells that are often also dysfunctional. They are also very painful and prone to infection. Common examples of chronic wounds include diabetic foot ulcers and pressure ulcer wounds. While current treatment methods exist, they are very expensive. In the U.S. alone, $5 to $9 billion are spent on treating chronic wounds each year. Currently, the most common wound care products on the market are gauze or foam dressings. The following options only address infection prevention by keeping the wound's environment moist, free of bacteria, and oxygen-rich. While providing this environment is important, patients need a solution to shorten their wound healing time. Long treatment time increases the probability of the patient sustaining permanent tissue damage. Permanent tissue damage, my friends, is not optimal. In response to this problem, scientists have developed a collagen wound dressing that reduces chronic wound healing time. Collagen present in the wound dressing encourages new tissue growth. Collagen-based wound scaffolds compensate for the loss of natural collagen required for proper tissue regeneration in chronic wounds. MMPs that would otherwise attack the body's naturally forming collagen bind to the collagen on the wound dressing and leave the body's natural collagen for wound healing. Collagen has great applicability to medical uses due to its structure. The surface area and hydrophobic characteristics create an ideal environment for the many fibrogenic cells that promote the production of new skin fibers. Since collagen is naturally hydrophobic, bacteria transporting liquids cannot infiltrate the wound. Also, collagen's fairly low bulk density, caused by the difficulty in ordering the individual fibers, gives it space to move and flex along bodily contours. Additionally, since collagen has high tensile strength, it will resist tearing and permanent deformation, even after a fairly large stretch. Collagen fibrils are very useful because of their intrinsic properties. Collagen is a matrix fiber, and each fibril is made of thousands of triple helix alpha chains, all subjected to strong bonding interactions that are around 100 to 150 nanometers in size. Due to the presence of glycine and proline, which are both very small amino acids, collagen fibrils are space efficient with regards to the packing, with enough empty space to allow for flexibility. Additionally, the fibrils have a bulk density of 0.01 to 0.3 grams per cubic centimeter, meaning that as a wound dressing, collagen can be thin and unobtrusive yet extremely strong and flexible. Collagen, as produced naturally in the cell, is processed through protein synthesis. Once produced naturally in the cell, the unprocessed, non-engineered collagen is then extracted from the skin of various animals, such as pigs and cows, depending on the targeted tissue for treatment. Even though collagen is a naturally occurring protein, scientists must still process and purify collagen to ensure its biocompatibility and application in a medical device. 
while the outcome is the same, the collagen processing method varies from company to company. Collagen dressing consists of fine collagen fibers formed into dry-laid, non-woven sheets or webs. One processing method for preparing collagen sheets is the extrusion of collagen gel into a fibrous matrix via a coagulation bath, followed by partial air drying or freezing, which absorbs the aqueous fraction from the gel. Collagen is one of the main biopolymers used within the body to deliver chemicals within antihistamines, antibiotics, and anti-inflammatories. The sponge collagen allows drugs to transport quickly with a high diffusion rate through the material because of collagen having a partially open porosity system. In tissue engineering, collagen's matrix structure is used as the foundation for many biomaterial uses, including the injectable matrices that is implemented in the drug delivery system and as a part of the structural integrity in bone regeneration. The material's main use is to aid in the wound healing process to accelerate the growth rate of tissues for the body. With chronic wounds comes persistent inflammation, which prevents the regeneration of surface proteins that ultimately help to reseal the wound with the skin. Chronic wounds really are terrible, and nobody wants to look like this guy. Oh, luck. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs, and every afternoon I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Oh, no! No! Ow. To help heal wounds like this, a lightweight, flexible collagen dressing can be added to help boost the migration of fibroblasts and keratinocytes. These two cell types are very important to the healing process, and in a chronic wound situation, these cell types are diminished. But why are they so important? Because during the healing process, they work together to help promote the pro proliferation of cells that develop into an extracellular matrix that eventually becomes a skin. Although collagen has great potential medical uses in humans, there are some limitations of the current approaches. In a study using sutures to attach collagen matrices to the abdominal hernias of rats to help them heal, the matrices actually failed to integrate fully. The shrinking, though, is a huge limitation because collagen shrinks once, after, once it reaches a critical temperature range of 55 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And since the human body maintains a healthy 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit with minimal fluctuation, Shrinking poses a huge obstacle in human applications. But despite this, researchers are making great headway into improving the performance and properties of collagen to be used more effectively in human applications. So although collagen is limited for its medial uses for surgeries and inside the body due to its shrinkage and temperature properties, adding a collagen-based dressing or increasing the consumption of collagen helps immensely with the healing process on all scales. But it is, it is especially novel with chronic wounds, as it helps promote the synergy between the skin cells and the regeneration cells, which coincide to a perfect storm for skin growth and healing. So, why is it so useful? Because it is also readily available and biologically derived. It is evident that collagen has great potential, and in the future, we can use it for even greater medical uses to make chronic wounds a thing of the past with great success.